Welcome to another edition of Legal Quilts. First of all, I want to say welcome to all my new subscribers. It's very nice to have you here. And um, hello again to all my returning subscribers. I'm so glad you decided to all come back. Um, this edition is not really going to be scrapped summer, uh, but it is going to have a summer theme because we're all traveling and we're picking up souvenirs and things. So this is going to be a quilt um, based on a souvenir I got from a recent trip we took. We went up to the Smoky Mountains and at Great um, at the Smoky Mountains National Park, I got this great book. Let me lean it in a little bit. Um, and it's probably backwards, I know. But it's um, Quilts and Coverlets of the Smokies. And this was sold right in the park store, so it helps the national parks and all. And it's got a history in it of the of quilting in the Smokies and such. And at the end, there's some patterns. So I thought that was really cool to pick up. But also, the reason for the trip was my husband wanted to drive ride on his motorcycle something called the tail of the dragon which is 318 curves in 11 miles people come from all over to ride this thing we saw a license plate on a motorcycle from ontario canada and just so that you know where this is it's right on the border between north carolina and tennessee up in the smoky mountains right near um like i said the great smoky mountains national park uh very close to Bo dollywood too um so he rode that um, with a buddy of his who also rides motorcycles. So while well, there, we hit up the gift shop, and what I got was this really cool bandana because I saw it and I said, I can make something with that. Um, and you can see the tail of the dragon here. It, it starts, the tail of the dragon starts, let me make sure, the 11 miles go from deals gap somewhere here um, <laughs> oh yeah down here here's the beginning of it okay and then it goes all the way up here this is a map of it basically okay and in the chase car I, I took the car up to see them and you know to go shopping and the beginning of it you got a pre part and I drove that I did not drive the 11 miles although you can do it in the car I mean it's a public road no trucks are allowed to it. No big rigs are allowed on it. Um, but regular cars can do it. And then leaving. So you start at Deals Gap Resort, which is a nice little place. I had, you know, could sit and watch and wait for them and everything. Leaving Deals Gap. Make sure I don't mess this up. Okay. Leaving Deals Gap. It's right here. Deals Gap is right on the state line. Okay. Leaving Deals Gap, you could go back down the way we came. Because there was no cell signal, I took a wrong turn and wound up going down 28, which is part of the Moonshiner 28. I did not intend to drive the Moonshiner 28, but I did. Um, and it was not a fun experience, but I've got the t-shirt now. The guys drove it the next day um, and they were like, you did what? So I got this bandana and here's what we're gonna do with it. It's thin as you can see, so you don't, it's pretty much see-through. You don't really want to use that as a block. Um, so what I'm gonna do is applique it onto a bigger block, but this thing's really big. So as you can see, I've got this other big block here and you can kind of see it's got big motorcycles on it. So I really wanted the whole motorcycles to show. So it's gonna be really wide what I'm applicating this onto. You can use a smaller piece if you want. Use whatever size you want. You get your bandana, which are sold in a lot of places. So if you go somewhere, you can do this trick where you just get a bandana and then you figure out what size you want your back piece to be. Um, and I bought this fabric on Spoonflower because it's one of the few places to have a Husqvarna, which is what my husband rides. And if you know motorcycle people, you can't use the wrong motorcycle. Um, most motorcycle fabric that you can buy is Harleys and he doesn't ride a Harley. So like I said, you gotta use the motorcycle they do. And Spoonflower is great. I've got a Spoonflower shop too. And, I, and I'm gonna put those links in, I'm gonna put a link to that shop in the show notes. So you spread it out and you lay it down and 
This is really straight how it's made, but it's good enough. And then I'm going to baste it down so it doesn't move. Because like I said, I'm just going to applique this on. So just like fold it up. A little bit of base, spray base. You don't have to do a lot. And just spread it out. There you go. And then do the other half. And again, not a lot. Just enough so it's not going to move. Because this one's pretty big. If you're working with smaller pieces, you might not have to spray base. It's a personal thing. If you want to spray base to keep your pieces in place, go right ahead. Um, but definitely when something is this big, you definitely want to. Because it'll shift. And get out all your wrinkles. You want it to lay flat. Okay? There we go. Looks nice and good. All right. And so then you've got it all based it on. So now for the next step. So now that you've basted your piece on, and you can see it a little better, we're a little closer up. You can see what it looks like a little bit more. Now that you've basted your piece onto the larger backing, and again, you can do any size if you've got a smaller patch, Use it smaller, you don't want to have as much sewing. But if my math is right, this should make a lap quilt. We'll see. And I've already got my machine set up to just do the applique stitch, okay? So you get it under here and you want to position this just right so you're just beyond the edge of your um just beyond the edge of your bandana onto the fabric and let me this is going to be annoying but i'm going to move this in so that maybe you can see that a little better okay can you see where my needle is right now it's right there just a, see this is the fabric and my needle's right here okay so let's get everything set up again you can watch me sew okay so you've got that and then you just and I had this all set up already on the applique stitch. And so you just, what is it not doing? Ah, didn't put my presser foot down. You just sew all the way around all four corners. You can start wherever you want. Okay? This is a little, let's see, I'm going to see what I can do. Lengthwise, put a little bit more on my stitches here. Let's see what I can do. Okay, you want, as you keep going, you can space your stitches out a little bit. They don't have to like, be super close together because you're just holding this in place, okay? And I know that caused problems before. Let me see if I do it this way. It's not blocking everything. And you just sew, like I said, around all four corners. Okay? Now there's a lot of things you can do. Like if you were using this, this this would be a very large wall hanging. You could do that. Or a table topper. Make a really nice table topper. Um, or you could have done this a little smaller, make a pillow, although this is like 21 inches square on the bandana, so that's already a big pillow. But if you got a smaller one, just stick a backing on and call it a pillow. Okay? Like I said, I'm making a blank, a, a quilt. A lap quilt. So you just keep going. I'm not going to sew all four corners. I just want to get to a. See if I can do this here so that y'all can see what I'm doing. I just want to get to a corner so y'all can see what I'm doing. Okay? The problem is, yeah, it gets awfully bulky. Okay, let me tuck this down in here and so she can still see what I'm doing. Oops. I don't want that. It's turning, and I don't want it turned right now. All right, let me tuck this in like this. Okay. Just one second. There we go. 
Oops. I'll have you back in a second. Okay. There we go. All right. So you're getting to a corner. I start about the middle. You can start wherever you want. Just don't start too close to a corner. And don't start at a corner. Okay? Don't start at an end. Start a quarter of the way to the mid of a side. And then when you get to the corner, when your, your needle is on the outside, so it's on the outside of your applique block, lift up your presser foot, swing her around, Okay, so that you're now, the, the side you're working on is now under the needle, okay? And the other one is along the top. And you just continue sewing until you get all four sides done. All right, and then when you finish that, we'll do the next, I'll show you the next step. So now you've got your, uh, bandana appliqued onto your background. Now what? If you're, like I said, if you just want to call this a wall hanging, you're done. Put your batting on your backing, you're done. Quilt it. Like I said, I'm going to make this into a lap quilt. Now there's a lot of things you can do. You can put blocks around it, do all these patterns and such. Block pattern. I'm just going to do this one simple. All right. I'm just going to add three quick borders of differing lengths. I cut strips four, in, four inches, three and a half, and three. Okay? And you notice more motorcycles to go along with the theme. And then the blue to match the water because I got everything else. You know, we've got the black already in the motorcycles. And this one has the red from the um, route. All right. So I decided to get the blue to match. The, it doesn't quite match the water, but it's still there. And then the white to go along with the white theme. There's not a lot of color in this. Um, because I'm going to back it and bat. Um, I'm going to back it in white and bind it in white. So I added the white in. Now you can arrange these borders in any order you want. You can make them all the same size. You can vary the sizes. I decided to just go, you know, half inch, half inch. Um, you can go from larger to smaller if you do them, or smaller to larger. It's up to you. I'm going to kind of do it. Here's how I'm doing it. The three and a half inch, the four inch one that'll finish three and a half of the motorcycles, because I want that closest. Okay. Then the blue for the water which is the smallest. So it's going to go largest, smallest, medium. And I could have cut the white, I guess, the same size so that you could have had that. There's all kinds of things you can do. Do what you want to do. I decided I wanted to do it in this order. The blue in the middle, because it's see how the blue is kind of surrounded by the white. And also, like I said, I'm going to bind it and back it in white. I'm just going to get some plain muslin and call it good. So I wanted the white on to be the outer border so that the thread doesn't show. Like I said, this is just going to be really simple borders. All right. I'm going to start with the first one. And I, I cut eight strips of each and just sewed them into the long line using, you know, the bias because I think that makes it a little smoother. This was fun making sure I didn't make, you know, didn't get one side upside down for the motorcycles. Still going to look a little weird when I get going around. Um, so, let me see. I probably actually want the other end now that I think about it. Because I want at least the top to be up. So, and when you're figuring out how many pieces to cut, as I just unthreaded my needle. Great. Um, measure it figure out. Like I said, this one's 21 by 21, but then we've got it on the big backing. I used six inches around because I wanted those motorcycles to show up. So having done that, you've got to figure out how many you can cut. Now most fabric is width of 42, so you're cutting your strips the width of fabric. So two of them gives you 84. That should be enough because what you have to remember is as, as you add a row on, 
you're making it wider by by both sides so if you've got a three inch this first one is cut at four inches it'll finish three and a half inches i'm adding seven inches to um the length and width of the fabric so that's seven more inches so instead of say it was just at 21 that's now 28. so you have to take that into account when you're doing this so hopefully i did this right of course, I got to get my needle rethreaded. So give me one second. I was so good. I got. I changed my feet. I um, made sure I had plenty of needle. Plenty of. I already did my. Did an extra bobbin, and then it un. It undoes. Okay. So what are you gonna do? Like I said, for this one, I'm just calling it a day. I'm just calling it. All right. So you've got, so you're showing the four sides on. Sometimes you might come to the edge of what you're sewing and you'll see that the join between two strips is what you would start with. There's a really simple solution to that. What I did, just snip off. Just snip off till you get enough that that's not going to be right on your corner. You don't want that on the corner. If you end with it on the corner, as happened here, it's a little harder to see than on the motorcycles. But see, it didn't really end there, so you're okay. But if it does look like it's going to, go back a few, go back a little bit, rip out some stitches, cut out that piece, that end piece, and re-sew what you've got there as a to your join again in, on your bias and just go on. You really don't want this this right on a corner. It just doesn't work unless you know how to do mitered borders, which I don't and I need to take a class because I would love to do mitered border because I like this join much better than the straight line one. But that's, but that's just if you're, you're just doing straight like I am, kind of just adding rows. And you see, I already added the top one on the blue. Um, that's because I want to sew the long side and show you what to do there. Now, and you notice at the bottom, whoa, that didn't work out. Um, I have to re-sew that. Something went wrong there. Um, I managed to make sure I started at the other end of the strip so that my motorcycles would still be upright. But I got to fix that. I didn't notice that. Um, that happens. You get off and it doesn't quite sew. Or I'm not sure because I can see it here. My needle got messed up somehow, but that's okay. These things happen. So you've cut the strip here on the side and you've got the new strip. You just lay it again, your short side to your short side here, matching the corner. And then you match your edges here. Make sure you're up at the top. You don't start down. You're up at the top. Where this row is, you start here. Don't start down here or it'll look funny because then you'll just have this stuff hanging off, okay? So you start up here, all right? And you just then do the same thing. You sew it down, sew down, and actually before I get started on that, because I'm going to need this end to be on there properly, I have to sew that first, otherwise it'll mess up because I won't have that length at the bottom. So let me fix that really quick. It'll take but a minute. Things happen. I'm not sure how that happened though because you can see the holes, so I was in the right place, just my needle wasn't threaded or something. Never had that happen. So you just go Like I said, you'll be, I need that length down there. I can't sew down and go, oh, this is flapping in the breeze. It won't fit on there right because you got to sew this here. You're still doing it. I don't know why. All right. We have decided to just be difficult today. 
Let's see what we can do. Yeah, I had some problems with the blue one too at the top. Just always be careful and check your seams as you go along. Make sure you're matching everything so that this is the other reason you match it so that you're not sewing on one side but not grabbing the other side. Okay? So there. So you don't want that flapping in the breeze because you need it. So we're going back up here. And we're going to find my end again. That's the only problem with having these really long strips, but I like to have all my strips sewn together because then you're not going, well, do I need two here or three here or only one? And you actually use less fabric because you just go right on to the next one instead of snipping off if you only use part of one and tossing that away and then you start at the next one. You, you use less fabric. Um, like I said, if you just go into two and you don't have to guess, well, is this side going to take two or only one? It just goes right into the next piece. So you sew down. Now, this is not part of Scrap Summer, as I said at the beginning, because clearly I'm not using any scraps here. I, in fact, bought fabric for this, as I said. The bandana was bought, the background, and this first row of motorcycles were all bought. Um, now, the blue and the white came from my stash. So, maybe this could be a stash buster, but realistically, folks, do any of us really bust our stashes? Here, I turned on the light again. Um, do we really ever realistically bust our stashes? No. What we do is we use up fab we use some of the fabric in our stash, but then we go buy more. And of course, I went to a quilt store on this trip. Uh, we went to a museum called Wheels of Time, and in the same town, which was shoot, I can't remember the name of the town. Um, little town right there in North Carolina, um, near Robbinsville, and um, shoot, it's right there. Um, Wheels of Time is there, and there was also a quilt store in the town. It's actually in somebody's backyard. It's in her she shed. Really, there's a sign that says "This way to she shed." She shed and she runs this little she's got fabric there and some patterns um lots of I, lots of mini charm squares and those are my weakness so i bought some fabric and such so um of course i had a quilt store um, and that was before we went to wheels of time which was a nice little museum about motorcycle history this is a motorcycle trip but you just sew down. So, you know, I might be using fabric here, but I didn't really bust my stash. Just like I said, does one ever really bust a stash, or do you just replenish the stash from what's been used? It never seems to go down. In fact, it seems to grow. So I don't think you ever really bust your stash. It's like I never seem to get rid of scraps, no matter what I do. I always get more scraps. I've got more scraps from making this quilt. Like I said, see, this one's going to end right at the corner again. It's going to be ending at the joins. So you just cut your fat, cut your thread. See, it's not quite. The join's right there, but I don't want to start with that. It's a little easier to see. See, the join's right there. It's not so not. I don't want to start with that. So I'll just cut it loose. Some of the joins on the corner, just a little bit of the corner, which is going to be hidden anyway by the next one. But if you didn't like that, you could go back, snip it, re-sew your strip, and go on. But I'm okay with that little bit on the corner there. Um, but I don't want to start with this bigger one, so I'm just going to snip it beyond there. All right? So then you just keep going around on your blue. So now you've got the blue sewn on, and it's time to sew on the white. I'm going to treat this like a traditional border. Um, 
And if you want to do that for your third one as a traditional border, you can do whatever you want. You can have pieces with cornerstones. You can have a pieced border, whatever. Someday I'm going to do a ribbon border, but I have to learn how first. Um, but this is just going to be plain. And I'm actually going to treat it like how I sewed on everything else. Except I'm not going to go around. I'm going to go the top, then the bottom, then the lengthwise. Because I want to emphasize the length of this quilt rather than um, the width. And this is going to be a lap quilt and it should finish 54 by 54. If my math is right, that's the plan. We'll see what actually happens. Um, so, and since it's ending up square, it doesn't really matter whether you emphasize the width or the length. Most quilts, though, are longer than they are wider just because of how we wear them. Um, we want them to cover our whole body. We're longer than we are wider. Um, so I like to emphasize the length on the quilt, but if you like to emphasize the width, it doesn't matter. Now, which one are you going to emphasize? You start with the other one first because as you see these pieces get you can see it better on this get longer take more fabric if you're as you go along so if you have the width is the longest pieces that'll draw your eye to the width that the cross if you have it on the length your eye will be drawn to the up and down and it'll make the quilt look longer even if it's not just it's where the eye draws you can go around like i have been doing and not emphasize anything if you're going to emphasize the width start on the sides if you're going to emphasize the length you start on the top and bottom i'm not really treating this like a border go look at my border one if you want to see how to really do borders but i'm going to treat it like i did everything else how i was just sewing it on there like a log cabin Except again, this is more courthouse steps than log cabin because I'm going to do top and bottom first. And again, it's very important you match your short sides and that corner and then get your long side. If you got some pieces hanging over like this because it didn't get cut straight, that's okay. You can go fix that before you quilt it. You know, you can go cut off any excess. It's okay. But you want to really make sure you get that corner and that you've got the whole short side covered okay and then you do the long side and you just sew this down okay all right and well i took a break to finish the blue you'll, you'll have noticed there's you know you go and here's this row and then we're back again yeah i'm cutting the filming in between there so I can finish. So y'all don't have to sit there and watch me film. Um, I looked it up. The Wheels Through Time and the quilt story we went through is Maggie Valley, North Carolina. And that's a very nice little town. It really is. We went to a nice little barbecue place right on the river. And that was fun. Um, and we just had a good time there. Said we went to lunch and then we did um, the quilt store and then wheels through time so we've been plenty of time to do wheels through time um, but when you're sewing this pay attention to what you're doing you can get a little zen but you still want to pay attention because you don't want your you want your edges to match you don't want it wandering off so then all of a sudden you have long side you have a wavy side because it's narrow in places and wider. Even if it's a little bit, plus you got to go back and re-sew those things. And it's okay if you catch it before you go on to the next one. But if you sew the next one in, it's a lot harder to adjust what you didn't get right the first time. Um, you know, you can rip out the whole strip, but if you sew the next one to it, you got to rip that one out too and. Then you get all these ragged edges, and it just... So pay attention to what you're doing. Okay? And take your time. Quilting's supposed to be fun, so again, don't stress over it. If it's causing you stress, put it away for a while and come back to it. I've done that before. Um, but it can be very relaxing, and you get zen, but you have to keep 
part of your mind on what you're sewing so that you don't have to rip it out and start over again, which just makes clothing not fun. There we go. And again, I'm trying to make sure y'all can at least see the sewing. It's a little hard to have space for the quilt and get the camera in here in a way. I think when I do my next quilting, I might go back to the GoPro and just see if I've got... Um, a little headband I can wear it on and that way you'll be looking right over it um, you'll be looking right at what I'm looking at and that might be the best solution all right but for right now hopefully yeah, I'm just doing straight stitching straight down with your quarter inch seam allowance straight along and this is the top like I said the next one will be the bottom and then I'll do the sides okay and since I'm going to finish this, you're going to see, if you go back to the picture at the beginning of this, you'll see what the finished quilt looked like. And you'll see, now that I'm talking about the length and the width of the sides and how it draws your eyes, go back and look at that picture and see what it says. See how you, see if you notice it this time. It's a subtle thing. It draws the eyes. It's not, and it does add length to the quilt because you're putting the sides on and going up so it adds a little bit but it draws your eyes because the last the longest pieces are on the side although wait a minute i misspoke it adds width because you're adding it on to the sides there but it draws your eyes to the length because they're the longest pieces go back and look and you'll see what i mean so like i said that's the top then i'm gonna do the bottom then i'm gonna do the sides and just like the other ones Snip and cut. Snip that off. Drop the, drop the clip. And there it is. All done. It didn't quite come out 54 by 54. In fact, it came out 54 width, 49 length. So you'd have to wear it like this. Um, but it's still okay as a lap quilt. You know, you're sitting there. Your legs will be warm. It's fine. Um, this is for personal use. So that's a, that's how you make a quilt out of a souvenir bandana. It's that simple, and it was that fun to make. Um, I know I took breaks. This video is as long as it took, but it only took about two hours. So that's not, not counting all the time it's been cutting the fabric. Um, but once you get going, it's two hours to make, and it's done. Um, I'm not going to put any borders on it. I just have to put the... Um, my arms are getting tired. I just, um, I'm going to sandwich it. And then when I quilt it, I'm going to use curves because this is based on curves. So I'm just going to meander around and put a lot of curves in. So that's the quilt. Um, and that's it. So that's it for this edition of Legal Quilts. We'll get back to Scrap Summer next time, but I wanted to do this while y'all are out traveling. Grab a bandana and try it. Like I said, it goes together very quickly. It's just stick borders around it. Applique it on, stick borders around it. Uh, again, welcome to all the new subscribers. Hope you come back for more. Thank you again to all our uh, all my returning subscribers. Don't forget to hit the like button, comment, um, share amongst your friends so they can see what we're doing. If you want to, buy me a cup of coffee. Link will be in the show notes, or a cup of tea. I don't drink coffee. Um, you can buy me a cup of coffee to show my support. No ongoing commitment, no subscriptions. Buy me a cup of tea or a couple of cup of teas, whatever you feel like doing. And um, I'm going to start giving shout outs to supporters. So buy that cup. If you buy me a cup of tea, you'll get a shout out. And um, if you want to see more of my work, what I have for sale, you can go to the website which has the things on it and again that will be on um, links in the show notes so again that's it for this time see y'all next time uh, when we get back to scrap summer